Hey guys, welcome back to The Build Shop, and today I'm answering a question about installing ferrules. And this question uh, comes about because the person who was asking it was trying to install 355 taper ferrules onto 370 parallel golf shafts. And they were, they were cracking, they weren't going on properly, they were getting deformation as they were trying to push them on too hard and they were indenting the ferrule. So there's a couple tricks that I can show, and I'm gonna show you and kind of explain to you that allows uh, those 355 taper ferrules to go on to 370 golf shafts really easy. Uh, and this allows you to use basically any ferrule on your irons or your wedges. Now, the ferrules I'm gonna be using uh, as an example are from Boyd Blade and Ferrule Co. These things are awesome from Patrick Boyd, also from National Custom Works. And these come in 355 taper only. And the reason is typically they're gonna go on blades which is kind of their whole thing because Don White's grinding blanks for them, which are absolutely awesome. I've been lucky enough to build a couple sets of them, but I digress. What I want to explain to you is how to get these taper ferrules onto parallel golf shafts. And there's a couple really simple ways to prevent cracking. Also to make sure that they stay nice and snug so you don't get any creep. And that is where the ferrule, when it's on the golf shaft, separates from the club head, which is really annoying and it doesn't look good. So here you go. Trick number one, take your ferrules, put them in a little bowl, get some hot water, really hot water, boiling water, dump them on and just let them sit. Let them sit for a minute or two. And then as you're building your set, pull them out, <sighs> blow the water out of them, uh, and then just roll them in some paper towel. They're gonna be nice and hot and they're also gonna make the, the plastic more malleable. The nice thing with these, for example, and any ferrules that you're using that are of any quality is the plastic's not gonna to be too brittle. If you're using cheap ferrules, a lot of times they are gonna be brittle and the likelihood of cracking is very high anyways. But when you're using quality components, which I like to do and I encourage other people to use, what's gonna happen is that plastic is gonna become more malleable and it's gonna be easier to get them up the gall shaft and then they're gonna stay there because again, they're nice and snug. Now I have another technique that I use because a lot of times I don't really have access to doing boiling water. And if I'm building one or two golf clubs or a set of three wedges, I don't want to go boil water. And again, it's just one of those things because I'm used to doing it and I'm really comfortable doing it. Uh, this is my little trick. So 370 parallel golf shaft, 370 parallel club head and a taper ferrule. Now if I try and put this on and really muscle it, I get it on about a quarter of an inch. Now, if I start trying to force this on, the likelihood of this thing breaking is pretty high. Now, again, I can use heat, and I've done it before, where you just take the, the torch and you heat along the bottom, on the top, like right along the ferrule there. And what that's gonna do is it just expedites that process where you would typically use boiling water. But I have a different technique that I like to use because a lot of times when I'm, I'm building sets with parallel golf shafts, I'm already reaming the club heads, and that is just to ream the ferrules. So you take your, your 370 reamer bit, you take your ferrule, and you just hold it, get it snug on there, and then... See, I pulled some plastic out of there. And now, go to install it. It's still snug, it's still nice and snug. I didn't go all the way through, so I left them at the bottom just to hopefully get Make sure that it stays on and prevents any creep. And now, really quickly, there you go. Now that's on nice and snug. All I gotta do now, use some epoxy. And with epoxy too, you're, it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's gonna act a little bit like a lubricant. It's gonna help that uh, ferrule get up a little bit easier. This, I'm not actually building this golf club. I'm using it as an example. A couple taps, you're good to go. And then once it dries, all you gotta do is turn that ferrule down and you're ready to go. So again, if you're new to this, use of boiling water. It's a really quick way to do it. If you got some, it's not quick necessarily because you got to boil the water and all that stuff, but it's an easy way to do it. And you don't have to try and hold a ferrule and use a drill bit. I'm really comfortable doing it. Uh, so it's one of those tricks. If you want to try it, you can also use gloves, but I appreciate the question. Uh, any question like this about club building technology, anything, just ask. I'm more than happy to answer them. Use the comment section below if you like this like the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.